find a game that you love to pieces, only to find that you seem to be the only one who knows about it? Because that's how I feel about today's game. I'm a member of a website called Swagbucks, which lets you obtain points for answering surveys, watching videos, and a few other things. Once you obtain enough points, you can redeem them for a gift card. I redeem my points for Amazon gift cards, which can be applied either to my Amazon.ca or Amazon.com account. I'm Canadian. Most of my Amazon gift cards go toward buying new games for my Vita. Over the past year or so, I've purchased a variety of Vita games from Amazon. The first was this, Aegis of Earth Protonovus Assault. I took a closer look at the game's entry on the PlayStation Store and found myself intrigued. I enjoy real-time strategy and tower defense games, and this was a tower defense game. I figured, eh, whatever, I'm not paying any real money for this. So I purchased the game from Amazon.ca, and about a week later, it arrived. And I quickly discovered a game that defines the term Hidden Gem. This was the fourth game I got a Platinum Trophy for, and I bought it before I became a trophy hunter. It's actually pretty easy. None of the trophies will be difficult to get. Some of them can be a bit grindy, but it's nothing that even a novice trophy hunter can't handle. I got the Platinum in less than a month, and not by grinding for hours every day, but just playing casually. Well, except for that time I was sick, but I was only sick for a few days, and even then, I wasn't playing the game for hours at a time. And recently, I picked up the game again on PS4 so I could play it again, talk about it with you guys, and maybe get a second Platinum from it. Gee, I wish I'd known that all the ports share the same trophy list. Otherwise, I might find that I've already gotten all the trophies even though it's for a completely different port. So let's not waste any more time. Today on Lords of the PlayStation, we bring you a review of a game we guarantee most of you have never heard of. Ages of Earth Protonovus Assault. Sometime in the future, humanity went through an event known as the Silent Apocalypse. I'll let the opening narration explain. Altonite. After the Silent Apocalypse, a new natural resource emerged as our last hope of survival. As we all teetered on the brink of extinction, mining Altonite became our lifeblood. By building cities over rich deposits of Altonite, we somehow managed to carve an existence for ourselves. There was hope, only a strand, but at least we had something to believe in.
but even hope was soon to be cruelly snatched away from our feeble grasp by those colossal beasts that rose to prominence over the years. The Protonovus, the gargantuan life forms we dubbed simply as the enemy, began attacking our cities as if they wanted to wrest Altonite from mankind's grasp. That was 50 years ago. Thanks to the monumental efforts and sacrifices of our forefathers, today we at last have cities with the firepower and defenses to keep our enemy at bay. As the game opens, we arrive in the city of Kimberley, a defensive bastion located in what used to be Australia. And we are introduced to our first four heroes, Toa, Tarkov, Chissa, and Lovelock an understaffed crew charged with defending Kimberly from Protonovus attacks. And now, you and your crew have to find a way to save the world from being annihilated by hordes of giant monsters. Despite being a very cartoony and happy-go-lucky game, the story is surprisingly decent. Actually, I take that back. The story isn't great, but the characters that take part in it are better than you'd expect. There are a total of 18 playable characters, plus two others who aid you in various ways. For firearms, you have Lovelock, Ashley, and Mary Bell. In power, there's Mona Lee, Turing, and Shino. General Affairs is Tarkov, Quio, and Barry. Intel is Chissa, Chica, and Penrose. Spec Ops is Taicho, Ra Randall? Randall. I'm no expert on naming conventions, but where I come from, Randall is a dude's name. <coughs> anyway, Spec Ops is Taicho, Randall, and Weatherall, and your deputy commanders are Toa, Hikachi, and Jernsback. Finally, Admiral Newman is your commanding officer, and Dr. Chandler invents new units and upgrades. And yes, each of them is unique. You'll remember their faces and personalities. The developers went out of their way to ensure that each character is distinct. So while the plot itself isn't anything special, the characters are. By the way, you might have already noticed this, but it needs to be said. The game is brimming with waifu material. These lovely ladies dominate the scene. Toa even has a Christmas cake problem. She's 26 and absolutely obsessed with getting married. Why isn't this game more popular? There are two art styles used in the game. The cutscenes and character models models are presented in a 2D anime style, while the game itself is rendered in full 3D, albeit with rather limited textures. It looks slightly better on PS4 than on Vita, but only in that it runs at 60 FPS instead of 30. What you're watching, as you might have already guessed, is the PS4 version. Speaking of which, I didn't realize it until I played the PS4 version, but those gray circles are roads, and the things moving on them are cars. Just goes to show you that you can always find something new in your favorite games. The music is good, but there are only a few tracks. That's really all I have to say about it. Ages of Earth is a tower defense game. In between battles, you build and upgrade your city's defenses, while in battles you fight the Protonovus. It sounds simple, but trust me when I say there's a lot more to this game than meets the eye. When building and upgrading, you use a few different resources. Money is obtained from taxing the citizens of your city, which you do after every battle. You also attract new citizens by winning these battles, meaning you can get more tax dollars. I swear that isn't nearly as tyrannical as it sounds. You also use crystals, which you obtain from slaying Protonovus. These crystals come in a variety of different colors, each of which has a set value and rarity. 
Some of these crystals are much easier to find from a specific city. For example, Kimberly is the best place to farm yellow crystals. You can also melt crystals down to make Altonite, which is a third resource used to build and upgrade your city's defenses. The amount of Altonite you gain from the crystals depends on the rarity of the crystal. Yellow crystals give you 15 Altonite per crystal, while red crystals give you 30, and so forth. You can also switch operators between battles. As you progress through the story, you'll eventually get all 18 crew members, whom I listed a while earlier. As you progress through battles, each crew member will have their energy drained. Once they fall below 50, you should switch them out for someone else. There is a bit of leniency here. After a battle, you can choose a crew member to get extra experience points and 20 more energy, extending the time that crew member can work. Hey, no need to thank me. Just remember what a resolute quick thinker you got on the crew, okay? Okay, time to move on to the battles themselves. In battle, your city will be attacked by Protonovus from all sides. They advance slowly, which is good, because it will take a while for you to move your city's defenses into position. That's right, the reason the cities are built as circles is that defenses are arranged in rings. You can rotate each ring individually, so that the guns are aimed in the direction the enemy is coming from. Once the guns are in place, they'll automatically target enemies, hopefully taking them out before they can do any damage. Now you might ask, why don't I just build a gun on each plot so that I don't have to rotate the city? Well, you can. Eventually. It isn't until near the end of the game that you gain the ability to increase the number of build plots. A lot of places in the city are quarantined, so that you can only build in certain areas. Thankfully, once you reach that special point, you can buy the plot, although it will cost a pretty penny. If you have multiple guns of the same type lined up, they'll combine into a more powerful version of the same weapon. A maximum of three weapons can be combined into one. There are three main circles within each city, with a fourth on the outside. This is where you can build special upgrades and defenses, most notably walls. The walls can absorb ranged attacks from certain enemies, and once you unlock a certain type of wall, it can be used to power your USWs. Just know that all structures in this fourth circle will need to be replaced eventually. What's a USW, you ask? An ultimate strike weapon. Your command center can be upgraded to house these ultra-powerful weapons, some of which can single-handedly turn the tide of a battle you might otherwise lose. They just take several minutes to warm up. Once ready, unleash the power of these behemoths and stop an army of Protonovus dead in their tracks. Every battle you partake in grants you a bit of XP. As you gain levels, you unlock new units and upgrades, which Dr. Chandler can research if you have the funds. Your cities will also gain XP, allowing them to gain upgrades to the command center. This is one of the most accessible games I've ever played. It's available on PS4, PS3, and Vita, and is easy enough for casual players to jump into. Each battle only lasts a few minutes, and with a bit of grinding, you can turn any city into a nearly impregnable fortress. And it has two things which gamers enjoy in abundance. Guns and waifus. Guns and waifus, that's pretty much all that gamers want. I have no idea why this game isn't better known. Was it really advertised that poorly? Am I missing something? This is the definition of a hidden gem. If you have a PSN account, you have no excuse. Buy this game. That's all for now. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next episode of Lords of the PlayStation.